Hey guys, Martin here. Uh, another episode of We're Still Here. Uh, cl closing in on number 50, which uh, is a, a, another milestone. It's a big milestone. Uh, it's It represents 50 weeks of me doing this, and 50 weeks of me continuing to try and tackle this whole depression malarkey, so to speak. It's actually inaccurate. I, I've been obviously dealing with depression for longer and there was a period of time where I was in the hospital and you know I had to take a break from doing these but uh, overall it represents almost I'd say two and a half years I think of having depression and uh, obviously we're not at 50 yet but we're also you know we're also not at any specific you know point in time that where I can be like you know use it as a frame of reference and say yeah that's when I started being depressed I don't think anybody can say that you know that that moment right there the depression just just it clicked you know it didn't it didn't start at any particular point it just sort of slowly took over and uh, I'm slowly fighting back very slowly it's an uphill battle and those are the slowest battles but uh, they're also worth getting up there you know they're, it's worth getting to the top of the hill to look back and see how far you've come and all kinds of cliches like that but uh i wanted to start off this one which i haven't done in a while by talking about something that makes me happy so here's something that makes me happy i'm big into wrestling if you've been paying any attention to my channel for the last two years or so or i think more like one year uh, you'll know that I've been doing a wrestling review show and I'm not talking about wrestling in general for this one I'm pretty sure I've talked about pro wrestling on We're still here and obviously on the mark remark series that I do So I've said en I think I've said enough about wrestling for a lifetime <laughs> for a lot of people uh, But I want to talk about one person in particular, which is Daniel Bryan and you may have seen him if you even if you're not into wrestling you may have seen him uh, in media, or especially recently, because he just retired, and uh, yeah, that's that's a a big, a big momentous thing in in the world of wrestling. In the grand scheme of things, Daniel Bryan's retirement is a very big deal, mostly because it's something you know. It, it his career was cut short very suddenly, uh, and it wasn't it wasn't obviously it's not one thing that did it. Uh, much like what I was just talking about with depression, it wasn't just one thing. It was a lot of small things and a lot of big things that added up over time. He suffered several concussions over the course of his career, some of which were undocumented. Uh, so he uh, ultimately had to hang up his coat and uh, call it a day, you know? And a lot of people were very upset about that. Uh, and I highly recommend checking out his retirement speech if you haven't already. Even if you're not into wrestling, even if, you know, you wouldn't think that, you know, a wrestler would have anything relative, rele relevant to say to you, he uh, he says a lot of things in his retirement speech that, you know, I, I was crying through the whole thing, mostly because, you know, it's sad to see a man have to give up on his dream. And, and wrestling was and is his dream, but he can't do it because it, it, it would risk damaging him irreparably for the rest of his life and uh there's there's an image of him out there right before his retirement speech where he's breaking down and he's crying and he obviously this is obviously one of the hardest things for him to do in his entire life probably the hardest thing and uh you know to go out there and you know just say this is it no more but he had the support of his wife in that moment and that struck a chord with me uh, and he was able to go out there and face something you know something overwhelming and something that basically was him saying well my dreams have been crushed oh well but he was able to go out there with a smile on his face and to face it with the kind of strength you'd expect from you know you, you wouldn't expect it from him I wouldn't expect it from any human being to be able to go out there and hold it together and talk like that uh, and he, he, he talks about it in other interviews, but, you know, he, he made it through it without breaking down into tears, and that's, that's impressive. But he says a lot of things in his retirement speech, you know, that, that really helped lift me up in a, a pretty bad moment. 
he says uh, a lot of very positive things. He that he's grateful for all of the opportunities that he's had. He's grateful for all the people that he's met, you know, and he's grateful for being able to do the thing he loves for nigh on 16 years. And, uh, you know, even if you're not able to do the thing you've always wanted to do, if you, if you even have a chance to do it, that's something to be grateful for. And I, I've had so many chances. I've had so many chances to do things that, that I live and breathe for, you know, I, I, I live and breathe to make people laugh and to make Mariana happy. And I get the chance, I get the chance to do that almost constantly. And I, I take that for granted and I need to be more grateful for that. But more than anything, Daniel Bryan as a person was just an incredibly positive role model. I'll say his catchphrase was yes. And you don't get much positive, you don't get much more positive than that. You know, you don't, you just don't, you know, there's a lot of catchphrases like, you know, Stone, <laughs> Austin 316 says, I just whipped your ass. Yeah, that's great if you want to be a, a badass and, uh, you know, kick some butt and all that. But yes is something that just expresses elation and celebration and reinforces, you know, a positive attitude. Even if, you know, you can use it in negative situations, most people, because of Daniel Bryan, use that chant to just say, we are really happy with what's going on right now. So he gave that, you know, there are a lot of chants out there that are very disparaging, but he gave the wrestling world a very singular positive chant to do. So that's a great legacy, you know, even if it was just that, but he also had some incredible matches. But he was able to stand in the ring for his retirement speech and basically say like some of the most encouraging and positive things I've heard come out of a human being's mouth. And, uh, that was, that was almost him at his lowest, you know? I, I mean, I don't know the guy personally, but he was at his lowest point in his life where he had to, you know, accept and acknowledge publicly the fact that he could no longer do this thing that has driven him for his entire existence that that had been taken away from him that he was powerless to stop it from being taken away from him he was able to smile and and promote charities and and you know talk about how magical it all was and not regret doing it and not regret that he can't do it he looks forward to doing something else to finding a new dream and that's incredible that's an incredible thing to leave behind you know to leave on such a positive note and to not let it destroy you or defeat you or emotionally cripple you. I admire that a great deal. I want to be something like that. You know, I want to be able to, you know, at the end of the day, look at everything that I have and have done and be grateful for it and be grateful for the opportunity to have that. I think we all do. I think we all want to be able to do that. It's easier said than done. So thank you, Daniel Bryan. I will always be a fan. And uh, I'm sure you'll always be a fan of wrestling in general. And you won't let what a lot of people would look at as a defeat, you won't look at it that way. You look at it as another step on the road that obviously took a sharp turn that you weren't expecting. And much like with depression, it can feel completely crippling and it can feel like it's holding you down and telling you stop, no, give up. But he hasn't given up. He won't give up. And that's why I love Daniel Bryan. I've been dealing with a lot, and I'm, I, I apologize if this is something I've covered already, but I've been dealing with a lot of apathy lately uh, a lot of negative sentiment the last week. Uh, I, every time somebody asks me, you know, what do you want to do? You know, even in a casual conversation, people are like, what do you want to do, Martin? And I'm like, ah, whatever anybody else wants to do. That's in general. That's not just because of my depression. That's just, I'm a very passive personality. But anytime somebody like looks at me, like in like a, like an interview situation or when somebody's just talking to me, 
man to man and or just wants to ask about my hopes and aspirations they're like what do you want to do with your life and i'm like i don't really want to do anything i don't really want anything and for a while i told myself that was a good thing still part of me still believes that there's something good about that because i guess in my head i tricked myself into thinking that not wanting anything means that i have everything i want but it it also means that I have no drive and I have no passion and I have no interest. You know, I sit, you know, I talk a lot about being an introvert and I sit alone in this room and I just let the world revolve and I just try to not be part of it. You know, I try and I, I just want the world to go by and leave me out of the whole situation. Just don't include me, leave me alone. And that's not good. That's not healthy. Uh, it feels good. It feels it feels nice. You know, it feels nice to be separate from everything and not want to be part of anything. But it gets dangerous. It gets really dangerous when that happens too often. And it happens too often. You know, I want to be alone. I don't want to be part of anything. I don't want anything. Marianna asks me a lot, you know, what do you want? What, what, tell me one thing that you want. And I... I usually respond quite honestly with, uh, I just want to be with you. And the problem with that is the word just. You know, because obviously it's okay to want to be with her. I've always wanted to be with her for as long as I've known her. And I still do, and I always will. And that that is obviously a want, but it's a passive want, and it's a want that I've achieved, and that I've not put enough effort into deserving. I don't want anything anymore, which is really scary when you think of it, you know, how it affects your decisions and how it affects your mood and how it affects your life. To not want anything means you don't want anything. You don't, you want literally nothing. I, I want literally nothing. There are times when I just want to disappear and uh, leave everything else because everybody else has wants and motivations people walking on the street that you see they have a, they have a will and they have a drive and there are times when i just feel like a zombie i guess i feel just sort of like i'm i'm going through the motions because this is what people are expected to do and i don't know how much of this is depression i'll be perfectly honest i don't know how much of this is something that i'm putting on myself i don't know how much of this is something that i've consciously decided I don't know how much of it is the depression and that's worrying you know it's something i need to get over it's always been part of me like i said i, I have a very passive personality but that only goes so far you know so there's being a passive person and then there's being a hopeless person because you know, want and hope kind of go hand in hand i feel very hopeless I like when I when I sit down and I try and work on a video it's just to get it out it's not to not because I have any like grand idea my 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 desire when I do them is to make people laugh and they make people laugh you know and that's just there it's already there I don't have to put much effort into it and th don't get me wrong I do put effort into it like obviously th this kind of video I I'm not putting much you know physical or mental effort into it but i'm putting a lot of emotional effort into it a lot a lot more go of work goes into the other videos but it's stuff that i'm just doing and going through the motions because i can and because i've done this for so long you know there's no you know the thrill isn't there i care a lot less about about the things that i used to care about i don't know how much of that is the depression but it's hurt people because I'm, ap I'm apathetic about my friends and I know that is the depression because my depression tells me you know they, they, they don't really want to talk to you they just want to talk to the guy who makes videos or they don't really like you they like Mariana and you just come with the package you know and my family I haven't spoken to in quite some time 
because it's easy when you're a fair distance away. Things seem smaller, less important, but they're super important. I wouldn't be here without them. But I can't bring myself to put in the effort to care as much as I should. So that's a huge problem I'm dealing with. But it's one of those problems that's so quiet and small seeming that it doesn't seem to go high on the priority list. But it is a big deal. It's a big problem. It's a big character flaw that in you know, in my estimation, if I were to guess, I'd say that it was a crack in my personality that depression has turned into a gaping hole. But I don't know if I allowed that to happen, if I did it intentionally or... Because depression messes with me, you know? The feelings that I have, I don't know where they're coming from sometimes. So yeah, I generally don't care right now. That's not good. But you know, if I didn't care, if I truly didn't care, I wouldn't be doing this and I wouldn't be talking to you about it. So I'm hoping that, that means something. I, uh, I'm sorry that there isn't much of a, like, here's how to handle it, because I don't know how to handle this. So I only hope that if you're obviously going through, if you, if you have, if you have similar feelings, if you have similar sentiments, if you're feeling sort of like you don't care or you don't want anything, you got to this place because you, there were things you wanted and you are here. You're here because, you know, you had a drive to get here and now maybe you're just spinning your wheels. Maybe like, you know, you shot yourself into space and now you're in the vacuum and you're just sort of orbiting the earth being like, what now? Oh, I'll just stay here and, you know, and just slowly let everything just sort of do its thing. But, you know, there's the world and then there's your world. And unfortunately, your world, the world itself will keep going, but your world isn't as simple. You've got to keep it going. You've got to keep that fire lit. So, cross fingers that we get through this. <laughs> I, obviously, that was unnecessary. I didn't have to say that. So, but I really do hope that it's something we both can overcome. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to be at a convention uh, next week. I'm going to be at Triad, or this week even when this comes out. I'm going to be at Triad Anime Con, which I think is in North Carolina. Don't quote me on that. I don't know what the hell I'm going. <laughs> but uh, if you're going to be there, hope to see you. Shake my hand, say hi, anything you want. As usual, uh, I apologize if I'm kind of, you know, I had a the last convention I did, I, I had a lot of panic attacks and I had to keep leaving the table, which is, you know, not common for me. You know, I, at Yomacon, I had to leave the table once to go break down, you know, in my uh, just off to the side and have a little cry. But uh, and then this last one I did, I had like five or six breakdowns where I had to leave and go to my hotel room and just stay there for an hour and calm down. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen this time. But if it does it happens can't can't avoid it can't pretend it's not happening it's just something that happens to us you know and one day i'll get strong enough that it won't be a problem and you will too take care of yourself